everybody, it's Dr. Rick uh, with the last segment of Riding with Rick for today. Uh, at least I think it is, unless something really, really major pops off. Uh, this is the last segment I told you. The, uh, the first segment today was pretty heavy. In the last few days, the segments have been heavy, dealing with death uh, on a number of different levels, but definitely things that we needed to square away and talk about. And I'm a guy that wants to laugh and enjoy myself as much as anybody. I want to celebrate the positive things. I spent so much of my life searching for the positive, so much of my life teaching people how to live in those moments. Uh, but I also fight very hard for my people, which puts me in a place of darkness often because there's so many things that aren't right that won't allow so many of my brothers and sisters to experience some of the savor and savor some of the flavor of this life that I've had an opportunity to, to savor. And so I fight hard uh, for us to get out of that rut, to heal from our trauma, to get through the darkness, to change some of the behaviors that work against us. And so it's going to be necessary to talk about those uncomfortable situations that we like to skate around and get into our escapism and our pretension. But uh, I also want to take time, man, when we're doing things good, like, you know, celebrating Shakari Richardson that a lot of people took aim at. And, and she's still not getting anywhere close to the appreciation she's, she should for the turnaround she made in maturity, the turnaround she made in recovering her form as a, uh, an elite athlete, um, and so much more uh, compared to the vitriol she took uh, when things weren't going well. And she didn't respond to the criticism well, and it just made it worse. And she didn't uh, respond on the track well, which made it worse. And, and I get that, but I knew she had the capability and I knew she grew up fighting. So she was fighting. She just didn't know how to fight the right way. And she had to grow up and it was a painful process. But uh, to her credit, she stood in there. So I wanted to celebrate. I wanted to sit up there and celebrate. So that's that. But that's not why I'm here to talk to you. I'm, t I'm, I'm back on Angel Reese again, y'all. I'm on, I'm, on, I'm on Angel Reese because... I'm really feeling how some of our younger athletes, our younger uh, male and female athletes, younger people who could be just wilding and, 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 and I understand what youth are gonna do. So the things that we expect in my age, I don't expect to see a 20 year old do. I, ex I know what I was doing when I was 20. So the idea that I'm expecting them to walk like me, talk like me, have the same interest and the same level of focus on certain things isn't realistic. What I want them to do is have a sense of themselves. I don't want them doing anything because that's the thing to do. I want them to really truly think about what they're doing and move and operate in their space, a space they're carving for themselves. And these young athletes, I'm talking about specifically now in college because these NIL deals that are allowing college players now to be paid for their likeness and their popularity and the, the, uh, that schools were just literally raping them uh, up until this uh, ruling came through that it's, it, it, it's, it's got to be, they've got to be compensated for their time. You know, we're giving them a free education. The free education that you're giving them compared to the money you're making off of them is absolutely ridiculous. And it was time to call it, call it. So you got players now making mad money. That, that transfer portal is allowing athletes to sit up and say, no, you're not gonna treat me like this. No, you're not going to mismanage my career by sitting me when I know I should be playing and all the politics, I'll go somewhere where I can play. And yes, it's creating havoc, but guess what? It's time for people to be able to be in a position to take control. And you're seeing it also on the professional levels in every sport except professional football where the uh, the old heads have to, have to die off before you're going to really start to see it let up and see more control. But the NBA is definitely taking control, and the old, old fans don't like it because we're used to seeing our players stay with our team, and now that's not the case. People are going where it's best for them, and that's that's what you should be able to do. It's happening in the regular job market. I remember a time that the whole thing was, I, when I grew up, my parents said, you get on a job, you stay on there. You Nobody's going to hire you if you keep jumping job to job. You got to get on there. You got to show some stability. You got to stay somewhere four or five years before you're ever thinking about leaving or people are not going to hire you. Now, headhunters are out getting people, trying to get them to leave companies, and people are being rewarded for leaving. So things are changing, and that area is going to change in this. But the reason I'm shouting out to Angel Reese specifically 
is Angel Reese just recently, I believe earlier this week at the end of last week, donated twelve thousand, if I'm not mistaken, twelve thousand dollars to her old high school. That's significant because that's a private school and she had to attend that school on scholarship. And not everybody qualifies for scholarship that sometimes it's not enough scholarship money to go around. And she paid for every female basketball player to attend that school for the coming year. Uh, and if you don't understand the way things are set up now in school, these private schools, these charter schools, these uh, schools are now where the athletes are going, especially in basketball, where the athletes are going that want to play, that want to uh, get recognized. They're not the regular old public school funnel isn't what it used to be in basketball. Now it's Saint this, Saint that, and all that. And that's where kids are trying to go so that they can get uh, the exposure they need to be recruited. And she literally came out of her pocket, $12,000. You gotta think, this isn't a professional basketball player. This is a college athlete. And while she makes more than almost all the professionals, she may make more than everybody in the WNBA, actually. I think she's pulling in close to two million a year or something. I know it's over a million a year. And so uh, the average salary in the WNBA is under 100 grand. Um, and we're not gonna get into why it's different than the WNBA. If you don't understand business demand and general revenue generation, you can't pay $10 million salaries when you ain't bringing in for six million a year. I mean, so you pay based off of revenue generated. They need to work on the marketing element and component. Uh, I heard something like lower the goals so it's, you know, so more of the female athletes can play above the rim, get more dunks, more excitement. Um, you know, I think that some young stars coming out of college are going to make it, make it excitement. Angel Reese is one of them. Uh, uh, even though everybody loved to, to hate her during the playoffs, Caitlin Clark is a unique talent. The way she plays the game, I think she's going to bring some excitement. Uh, there are a number of different female athletes that's got some, some, you know, jazz about the way they play the game. I think that brings some excitement uh, and get more fandom. But you got to understand, uh, male fandom drives sports, you know, and even in things like baseball, we see a lot of women attending the game and even football games. A lot of them are there with their husbands. And so when you can't get a uh, pop, big papa to go, then a whole lot of stuff is not happening. So we got to get that part going and then you can talk about race and the thing. But back to Angel Reese. Angel Reese, it's not just that she makes the money to do it. That's dope. That's real dope that she makes the money to do it. But that she has the maturity and mindset to want to go out and say, this is what I'm going to do for the people at my school because I know what it's like trying to do that. That's huge. That's mature. That's what I'm talking about. So with that being said, look, I'm, I'm at the spot where I'm gonna be at for a minute and I'm gonna run in here and try to unwind with the fellas. I got my little man for the remainder of the weekend, my youngest grandson, Samaj. Most of y'all done seen him in some way, shape, form, or fashion. You'd think he'd have bossed me or something, but I'm gonna have him starting tonight and through Monday. So uh, I gotta get my last little hoopla in uh, before I get him tonight and he's trying to tell me and boss me around and do all this stuff. Um, but you know I love him and you know I'm gonna enjoy it. But hey, shout out to Angel Reese. If you like the stuff that you're seeing on this channel, hit the like button. If you uh, really like it, hit the share button, F follow and subscribe. If you're familiar with the work I do in the community, please show some love and support and su support the work. The stuff that happens on here is a, f I mean, real small fraction of what's really going on behind the scenes in research and community work and program development, program implementation, resource uh uh, resourcing uh, mental health and domestic abuse and so many other things. So again, uh, I'm going to challenge you. If you believe in the work we're doing, hey, we need your support. So go in that description box and look at the link. Click the link. Give. Give through the organization's cash app handle, which is in there. But whatever you do, give. Show some love. Share. Make people aware of what's going on. But hey, shout out to Angel Reese. I'm out.